Hello, welcome to this lesson in Mastering Statistics. We're going to continue working with hypothesis testing, uh, but here we're going to be doing uh, hypothesis testing with means, with large samples, same as we've been doing before. We're going to be using the p-values that we have talked about in the last section. And I'm just going to leave this on the board. We just have this left over from the last uh, lesson. Basically it says if the p-value is less than or equal to the level of significance, then we reject the null hypothesis. If it's greater than, we fail to reject. And I drew a lot of pictures for you. And hopefully by now I've proved to you that basically this comparison, uh, if you remember, the level of significance is a shaded area in the tail of the curve. And also the uh, p-value is also a shaded area in the tail of the curve. Um, the level of significance is basically how confident we are going to be in the answer. And the p-value is the probability of getting something uh, more extreme than the data that we've collected. But in the end of it, at the end of the day, both of these guys are areas under the shaded tail of the curve. So I think I've showed you from drawings before that if the p-value is less, or if this area is less than the level of significance, then that means that the z, the the, the z score, or the um, the uh, the test uh, statistic that we have calculated for our data is falling into the rejection region. That's why we're rejecting. So p-values, rejection regions, they're they're two different ways of looking at it, but essentially they're we're arriving at the same conclusion and really through the same sort of mechanism. So here what we're going to do is work a couple of rapid fire problems. We're not going to do a lot of word problems in this section. Um, I'm going to give you the null and alternate hypothesis and we're going to go ahead and use the p-value method to figure out if we reject or fail to reject that null hypothesis. Uh, but these problems should look familiar because if you remember, a few lessons ago I also gave you some practice, some rapid fire practice with a couple of problems. These problems here are the exact same problems that we did before. I'm just solving it with p-values instead of solving it with rejection regions. So go through this, make sure you understand it. You might want to compare this to what we did last time when we did the rejection regions and you'll find out that they're basically giving you exactly the same answer. And that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing it on purpose to show you two different ways of tackling the same thing. All right, so first let's get started. Let's say that we are given a, um, and we'll go ahead and work on, on this board over here. Let's say that we're given a null hypothesis and we're dealing with means, so that's why we're using mu here, is greater than or equal to 409. Again, we could be, uh, we could be doing anything in a factory where we're measuring the volume, the width, the length, something. The null hypothesis is saying that uh, we're always greater than or equal to 409. The alternate hypothesis is given to you in this problem as being less than 409 because these have to be opposites of one another. Okay, so this is given to you and it's exactly the same as it was in the previous problem I got did a few lessons ago for you. The level of significance is the same, 0.05. And also, one more bit of data. The uh, test statistic Z that comes from the data is 1. I should say 